calories in, calories out does not take into consideration the macronutrient differences in a lot of diets. And especially on the zero carb carnivore diet, we see many anecdotes of people consuming way more calories than they used to, yet they're still losing weight and improving their body composition. And hey, we also see the opposite. We see people consuming very little calories and not losing any weight at all. Now, in regards to a study done, you know, they fed three groups of people, a thousand calories of each of the macronutrients, like one group was carbs, one group was fat, one group was only protein, the fat group lost the most weight, the protein group lost half the weight of the fat group, and the carbohydrate group actually gained weight. So there's definitely differences in regards to macronutrients, and I don't want that to be the focus of this video, so we're just going to kind of brush that to the side. And I want to talk about my experience with weight loss with my sister. And you know, she is mentally disabled, uh, which is important in the context that she can't do resistance training, she has no willpower, and she cheated on her diet at day program because my relatives are jerk offs, to be honest. But, you know, she's the worst example of someone that needs to lose weight because she's sedentary, she has an incredibly low lean body mass, her frame size is super small, she's 4'11 and she's supposed to be literally 90 pounds with a little muscle. She's insulin resistant, she heavily, was heavily obese at 4'11, 160 pounds, and uh, I guess th those are all the factors, right? So, we started at 411, oh, and the hormonal thing, you know, she took birth control, she probably had way too high estrogen levels, that's probably another thing to consider. So those five factors, you know, it, it can't really get worse than that unless she has some sort of disease like diabetes. Now, we did get her down to 135 pounds doing lazy keto, but then it just stalled for months. Uh, we refined the diet a bit, restricted the calories, started walking for exercise, we got her down to 125, 120. You know, we couldn't get her below that point until we removed all plant foods and did zero carb with her and did probably about an hour and a half of cardio, two hours of cardio a day. And this was just walking, uh, no resistance training. So we did eventually get her down to 103 pounds. Uh, I mean, she still literally has 10 pounds of body fat. This girl's literally 4'11", 103 pounds, with like, and she's still like 25% body fat, believe it or not. Uh, just unbelievable how little lean body mass this girl has. Literally... Uh, she could probably literally weigh 85 pounds if she wanted to, unfortunately. So it was, you know, very difficult struggle getting this girl to adhere to a, you know, 300 to 400 calorie diet for several months to just lose a pound a week. And, you know, if she went out and cheated one day at her program and had a thousand calories that one day, that would pretty much ruin the whole week. And that was probably what was happening every week. That's probably why we had such a hard time getting her to lose weight. But the reason I'm bringing up this story is because you know, we see a lot of people on zero carb carnivore lose weight and improve their body composition in general. And uh, this is why some people don't. You know, those underlying factors, other reasons, are why some people see success on this diet in regards to weight loss and body composition, and some people don't. And that's what irritates me is the, like, eat as much as you want. Your body needs nutrients. No. Muscle meat, especially grain-fed beef, doesn't have nutrients. Liver, organs, fish, that has nutrients. That's what your body needs when it has excess fat. It's one thing if you're skin and bones and you're starving, that's when you might actually need caloric nutrients. But there's a big difference. You know, people saying you need to eat four pounds of pork a day for nutrients are brain dead cult like idiots. I'm not getting further into that in this video. But if you have someone who's 400 pounds, they could literally just eat 200 calories worth of liver, salmon roe, and cod liver oil every day for months at a time. And as long as they have electrolytes, they'll get to their ideal body weight. They have enough protein in those organ meats. Their body is living off of the fat in their body. You know, they have the vitamins from those nutrient-dense foods, and they maybe just need a little bit of electrolytes here and there. But that is a very strong willpower thing. That you know, you'd have to have incredible discipline to do a, a calorically restricted diet to that extreme. And fasting too. Fasting is great for resetting palatability, resetting hunger, craving, stomach size, just losing weight in general. It's great for overall health. It's something I always do, but again, not everyone wants to do that. So, those two things, the fasting, the incredibly prolonged periods of time on reduced caloric deficits, those are the extreme and self-disciplined ways for people that have that iron will, that have no underlying health problems, that want to understand nutrition more as a whole. Generically, for people on the carnivore diet that want to lose weight, we have to take a couple steps here and there. And most people don't remove foods like dairy and cheese, unfortunately, at the start. And that actually might solve a lot of problems. And the problem inherently isn't with eggs or dairy. It's that you're not just consuming 600 calories worth of eggs. You probably wouldn't have eaten those eggs if you just had meat. 
you're not just consuming 100 calories worth of cheese. Those 100 calories worth of cheese is causing you to eat 1,000 calories. You know, it's like if I had a dry-aged steak with aged balsamic on it, I'll probably have another 1,000 calories worth of steak. It's not the food in itself that's the problem. The food itself is creating an artificial palatability that's causing you to consume excess amounts of food. So, removing eggs and dairy is one way to lose weight on the carnivore diet. If you're literally only eating meat and water, I don't think there's too many people that are having problems with that. Maybe they're just consuming too much protein. Maybe they need to change their fat ratios. For me, the ideal meal, it starts with organ meats and high vitamin fish, a couple bites to get those cravings out of the way. Then you move on to eating the fat. And once your fat satiation is done, then you move on to eating the protein. The reason you do that is because your body has different hunger signals for each of those foods. It says, okay, Frank, you got enough copper from the liver. And then it says, okay, Frank, you, you have enough fat in your stomach. That's all the bile we have to digest for today. Then when you eat the protein, it's like, okay, Frank, that's it for your stomach volume. Your body is able to digest a certain amount of each macronutrient and vitamin and mineral to a certain degree, and it craves certain amounts. That's something that people really need to keep in mind and consider. And increasing the overall nutrient density of the diet, you know, through muscle meat and fat isn't really the important thing here. It's, you know, things that make much more of a difference are removing the dairy and the cheese, resetting palatability through fasting, uh, electrolytes probably tie in a lot. One thing I should definitely mention is a lot of people think they're hungry when they're thirsty. And this is overlooked by an incredible amount of people. I think most people should be hydrating throughout most of the day and then maybe having meals at least after you're definitely adequately hydrated with high amounts of mineral water. Uh, but I think I touched on pretty much every topic in regards to weight loss on the zero carb carnivore diet. Um, the idea of this video was just to throw those ideas out there. You know, just say, you could do this, you could do that, blah, 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 and get you guys to just do the research on your own. And this is the purpose of all my videos. I can't go into depth on a lot of these topics. The videos would be too long. I would never get all my content out there. There's just, there's literally probably 10 things in this video I could have each talked for 10 minutes on. But that's just, you know, my, I'm just here to bring the information to you guys, get you guys thinking, and get you Seco warriors out of my comments. I was a little salty yesterday. But, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, you know, hey, check out the story on my Patreon. Just share the channel. Uh, definitely some things to be looking forward to over the next few weeks. So I guess to summarize this, you know, Frank, what would you actually do with a client that came to you for weight loss? Well, first, we, it depends on, you know, the discipline. Like, obviously, that extremely caloric restricted diet and fasting is an extreme thing. And usually only clients that come to me that do that were already doing it on their own. I don't really advocate that. What I advocate is, you know, we can increase nutrient density of the diet. We can restrict calories if necessary. We can do OMAD. We can do one meal a day. You know, there's various things I can do to critique someone's diet. You have to explore all of these options and see which one you think works for you. For someone like me, I could fast for a week, or I could go on a raw diet only for two weeks, or I could get candida from eating too much honey and milk and not be able to eat for two weeks. There's multiple ways to lose weight, some of them healthier than others, and nutrient and mineral deficiencies and vitamin deficiencies need to be spoken about more. If you haven't been consuming organ meats and you don't have adequate fat-soluble vitamin stores, and your food isn't high in minerals because of soil demineralization. There's so many factors that go into hunger, thirst, and satiation that you guys might not be thinking about. It could be as silly as a vitamin D3 deficiency. That's why you might be eating so much. Who knows? There's so many things to look into. So, uh, as with me, I encourage you guys to take everything with a grain of salt and to always try to explore and broaden your dietary knowledge.